Hello, my friend. I just heard you hit the mic. Hello, my friend. I hit the mic. So professional. Also, a little offensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, what were you saying about the vitamins? So, I felt really good yesterday. I had a good, I was on a good mixture, and I don't want to waste it, national like reference. A cocktail. Here. Yeah, uh, but I was on a good uh, like mixture of vitamins, and man, I felt great. No, 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 this was day before last. Oh, okay. And then yesterday, I did the same thing, but I just I felt just like ugh, it's like I couldn't get out of you know out of my funk kind of thing. I mean, I felt kind of weird too, but it wasn't because of pre-prescribed cocktail of water soluble vitamins. No, I mean mainly it's because of this like COVID brain thing that I'm just mm. like. Trying all these new, uh, like, alpha brain and, like, mm -hmm. a lot of, okay. like, B-complex and uh, all the stuff that's, like, good for, like, mental sort of sharpness. But, man, hmm. didn't work yesterday, pal. I thought you were going to say clinically proven and then I was going to... I mean, it is clinically is proven. The B-complex. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know about alpha brain, though, huh? Uh, I mean, they're not a sponsor, man. so let's just not even... We're not yeah. gonna, We're not going to trash talk them. We're also mm -hmm. not gonna we're not gonna praise him because we don't know. I I'll mean, look I look into it. I, I've listened to Joe Rogan like rave about it, and I was like, man, maybe I should try this. I mean, he's on like the up and up with, yeah. you know, mm. mental sharpness, like taking Off. all the supplements and stuff. And I don't, I, I don't tell that. I can't tell that much of a difference, really. Yeah, I wonder sometimes, especially like, I mean, this isn't a slight to anybody that. Um, is like an AMA fighter and has taken plenty of blows to the head. But mm. I wonder if there's like a baseline of oh, come mental on. sharpness. You know what I'm come saying? Come on, man. I like Joe Rogan. I think he's No, I know that. Sharp. I'm saying like, yeah, it might work for folks that are, you know what I mean? Like, Come on, pal. Right? I'm just saying. There's got to be a baseline for mental sharpness. Like how do you, like what's the qualifying data there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if I if he's like a three- Mm -hmm. And I'm an eight in terms Come of sharpness. On. Okay, flip it. If he's an eight okay. and I'm a three, mm -hmm. I take alpha brain. Where do I end up? Hmm. Ten? Does he end up at ten? Well, Does also, he tell that big of a difference? Also, I think, I think me being on this like top secret Fake. project I'm working on, I'm just getting so little sleep. Yeah, burning I, the midnight oil. Yeah, I don't think anything is like equalizing that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's Dude, like sleep, I'm, sleep is like the most important thing, and it it's really the one is. thing that gets taken from you when you become a parent. Oh yeah, boy, those early days of parenting are my god. Oh, dude, we Wait, just lost non. No, no, hold listeners. on, real quick, real quick. Okay, so you know how you sent me that picture of? Hey man, I think this is the the movie that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, I go on and on about trying to find this movie that I saw. Please tell when me. I was a kid. No, dude, I watched it. The movie's called the one that I was talking about in that sort of collage of pictures that you sent mm -hmm. was the one that kind of had like that i didn't remember that plasticky finish of this like skinless dude uh-huh uh i watched the movie it, it, the what? movie is called pin and it was released in 1988 super hard to find but i found it online it's not it dude oh. and it's also a really weird movie just i've never extremely heard of bizarre don't even bother it's weird as heck hmm. man yeah he kind of looks like dr goodbody with a head it gets real weird, and I don't, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of weird stuff in that movie. But bottom line is, watch this, it's not it, man. So. Hmm. Yeah, what we're talking to, folk, what we're talking about, folks. Hey, man. <laughs> if, Alpha brain. If you're, uh, sure. yeah. No, what we're talking about, if this is your first time listening, is Woody and I both have these, these sort of ob obscure, sort of blurry memories uh, from when we were kids or teenagers or whatever, of like these movies or songs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like we're on this lifelong quest to like track them down. Mm -hmm. And every like, well, every couple of years. But for me, man, I swear it's like every couple of months I'm like, I got to try to find it. And then that'll turn into me spending mm -hmm. an entire day trying to find either that movie or a song Wish I had that good. time, Woody, to spend a whole day. Well, I, you know, it's an exaggeration, man. <laughs> Ever heard of it? Hey, 
Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, That Would Be Rad, a podcast that majors in 80s and 90s nostalgia, comic culture, all things paranormal, and minors in retro video games, tabletop RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons, mm. pre-internet mysteries, and raising our kids to be half as cool as we were back in the 80s. Impossible. We are your hosts, Woody Brown. And Tyler Benz. What's up, brother? Hey, guy. I mean, I know you're coming down off of your uh, <clears throat> alpha brain uh, over to Cocktail. But, uh, how's your day going, man? I mean... Uh, it's going pretty good. I'm feeling good, feeling strong. Um, okay, did you skip them? Uh, what, my vitamins? Yeah. No way, man. God. I'm back on that. That mi- that good mixture this morning. <laughs> but s- also, I've developed psoriasis. <laughs> I've got, um, a, got a bad case of gout, and I think it's from all the Lord. calcium. You're like, man, I just can't. I don't understand it, man. I, I, I just like, I'm so tired all the time. Like, my kidneys are constantly hurting. <laughs> and I'm like, well, <laughs> it might be the Red Bull you're chugging as you, you know, swallow down fists full of quote unquote vitamins i mean anyway it's now fine. now listen you will you can vouch for this like i've always been so so my diet is yeah awful. hold on hold on my diet is awful i rarely ever go outside much less exercise uh <laughs> i'm i'm glued to my chair in my studio pretty much he's, he's the pillar he's the picture of health is the, yeah the, yeah the portrait mm-hmm, of good health mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm skating by on these good genes, I will say. Uh, but mm. I've always like, it's like in my mind, I feel like I can counteract that by just taking copious amounts of just vitamins that I just it's, that I oh. like uh, like research. Oh my for god! Hours. It's always been like, dude, I just found this. Hey man, mm. let me tell you about clownfish. Anyway, we'll get to that story another time. Hey man, that could have been just random bad. stories. We thought we'd do something a little bit different than what we've done before Mm -hmm. on the show Mm -hmm. uh, because we have a lot of episodes that we're working on currently, kind of a lot of spinning plates, uh, so to speak. And, you know, we wanted to kind of just reach out to our listeners Mm -hmm. and see if there was anything that they wanted to know about us. You know, the classic sort of like ask me anything type format. Oh, yeah. So we Also called a a Q&A. Or a QA. and a well, you know, for all you the, boomers out there, yeah, for the booms <laughs> or anybody our age, um, or Tyler's agency, yeah. Of them. So we did that, and to be honest with you, man, I, I just I, honestly it was kind of not overwhelming, but just amazing, mind blowing mm-hmm. the amount of questions and stuff that we got back. We thought that it would be perfect to start to answer those today. I love it. So, what we also decided was we're not going to name the listener that send in the question just so yeah. that you know if they get embarrassed or if or, they're in witness protection yeah or if they're in witness protection mm-hmm. trying to escape the valley of of the roses mm. or if there's listeners out there listening right now who maybe didn't submit a question because they were kind of nervous to be sort of called out on air or anything like that mm-hmm. maybe this will prompt them to send questions in the future god speaking right? of nervous you were so nervous this morning I'm not nervous. When I talked to you on the phone, you just had a nervous energy about you. What are you talking about? It it almost was, it reminded me of how nervous you were when you got your calf implant. God, dude, you gotta, you gotta stop making, <laughs> it's so stupid. My calves aren't even big. Well, before. Now, if you would have said like quads. Your dude, quad implant. trunks, bro. Like I can, like you do in cycling, have, I can, yeah. um, my legs are built for climbing. And if there's any cyclists listening, you'll Strong. know what I mean. Just super strong, like like a tank. Yeah, I, I will, and I'll be the first to say when we back in the band days when we here we go pre making it up pre no I'm not making it up. This is this is for real. Um, mm. Listen, you did get your ears pinned, but for the record, you oh did not God. get your get <coughs> calf implants. But no, what I was going to say so is stupid. Back in the band days, before they they made like skinny jeans for guys, we would get girls' jeans and then also have them tailored to be tapered like skin tight um good story anyway you always like just had massive like let like it looked almost dude off-putting? stop me you're making it even worse you just putting the, <laughs> is that the word i'm looking for <laughs> shush man not true completely speaking of over exactly that was a compliment all right dude listen let's get to these questions let's get in there 
All right. So the first one is, what, if anything, are you guys interested in right now outside of what you talk about typically on your show? I'll go first because so I just had this good. feeling like Tyler was going to have this 30-minute answer <laughs> that is going to be just about stuff that we talk about. You're going to cut so it off. I'll go first. Okay. Right now, I have been just insanely obsessed with some true crime stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, not just like the typical sort of, uh, you know, Netflix documentaries and stuff like that, although there is one that I have not started yet that I hear is amazing called Bad Vegan. It's, you know, what is that? hitting the... Hitting the charts. I, I don't know. I don't mm. know what it's about. But anyway, right now I've just been kind of diving into these well, pretty grisly cases. Yeah. Mainly because I'm like fascinated by the fact that for the most part with the cases that I'm kind of like watching and I mean I'm literally I'm taking it to the next I'm literally watching the live broadcast of the court case. Nerd of the court, court case that occurred like, you know, months ago. So I'm just, like, fascinated by the fact that, like, these people are seemingly normal and then they do this horrible, horrible thing. Mm -hmm. And mainly I just kind of, you know, want to know what to look out for, if Mm -hmm. that makes any sense. Well, speaking of— Step one, close your blinds. (laughs) Yeah, that is a—that's a big thing between Woody and I. We firmly believe that you should always close your blinds. Like, don't even open I, them, actually. Don't even, well, don't, I have blinds. Just make it like a big like just, iron gate. Yeah, just wall it up. Wall up mm-hmm, that window. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what, what are you into right now that doesn't have anything to do with what we typically talk about? Well, speaking of 30-minute answer like you just gave, I, yeah. honestly, if I had to, to answer, and I mean not to get like expound on, you know, everything that this podcast is, but in reality, we... Mm. it's sort of a curse and a blessing because on the one hand, sometimes it's hard to like pinpoint what our podcast is, you know, because Mm -hmm. it's not just a D and D podcast, not just a paranormal podcast, not just, um, you know, like specific sort of niche kind of thing. It's just like on the intro, it's, you know, any and everything eighties nostalgia to paranormal stuff to yada, 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 the whole spill um, honestly, I mean, we're, we're, it's so broad because those are the things that we're, those Super are all the things that we're into. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. we, you know, like if Woody's really into this thing this week, it's like, Hey man, let's figure out like an episode that centers around that or let's. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And like, uh, this is actually going to kind of go into the next question, which is, which is another interesting one, but like like you said, kind of blessing and curse of that is that like we really don't outside of researching some of the topics that we, you know, research and stuff. Yeah. We don't really have a lot of time to think about anything else really. And and that's a good thing because this is what we're interested in. Yeah. So basically we talk about what we're interested in and uh, we just happen to. Shorter version of Tyler's record answer. It. Nothing else. You gave um, literally a longer you know, answer than I did. But I needed to explain. It's about, about your why. true crime obsession. Yeah. I, oh. Listen, guys, I'm very embarrassed about this, but let me just say it again. I've been watching these <laughs> uh, court procedural uh, recordings, uh, and it is fascinating. It, it is really is fascinating. Really? Fact, we, we, we took our wives out to dinner a couple of nights ago, and literally Tyler's wife and I talked about this yeah. basically the whole dinner. Yeah. Much to the chagrin of our uh, spouses. <laughs> I mean, we were into it, but... It, yeah. I mean, it's like I've I'm sure I've said this before, but like real quick, it's like I'll my wife is just so anti horror movies. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, that's mm-hmm. demonic. Turn it off. Like, but then I can walk in and it's like they're going through the most gory details of like a well, this serial killer cut up his family and no, yeah, no, I know. I and it's like, good God, how how is this? Like, how yeah. are you okay with this? But yeah, not no, no, no. somebody mentioning the word Ouija board. No, yeah, for sure. And and two words. Alpha brain. <laughs> you know, truth be told, I uh, I kind of like, you know, kind of skipped through a lot of that. My, my, my main focus really is like, I want to see their like police interview. I want to see the moment where they're just like, they have that like, well, I'm caught. Yeah. I don't know. That's my yeah. obsession. No, that is really cool. Uh, speaking of, I will say, and I'm not like a huge true crime 
guy naturally, but I will say if you're into that, making your murder, obviously. But yeah. my favorite is well, it's a tie. The staircase is really cool. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, and then the most rewarding one is Man. the Jinx. Yeah. Which is wild. That's intense. That one I believe that's HBO, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah it's about yeah. Robert Durst. Um <clears throat> Fred and, Durst's uh, dad. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right. So this kind of leads into the next question, which is, do y'all listen to other podcasts? If so, which are your favorites? Kind of like I was saying, like, unfortunately for me, well, I say unfortunately, I don't really commute as much as I used to. And so I don't have a large opportunity to uh, listen to a bunch of podcasts because like the nature of like my quote unquote day job or whatever is more, um, you know, data driven, uh, financial and that kind of thing. And for whatever reason, the way my mind works, I have to be doing something that doesn't use that part of the brain to be able to enjoy and or I can really like kind of soak in whatever it is that I'm yeah. listening to. Like, you, you know, Tyler has recommended a ton of these really cool podcasts. And the second I start listening, I'm like, oh man, this is so good. I got to stop it because I want to pay attention, you mm-hmm. know? But when I do have a chance to listen, I usually listen to like Smartless, yeah, and and then as far as like stuff that's super interesting, um, Astonishing Legends, mm, that's Bigfoot good. Collectors Club, yep, Belief Hole, that's a great and, one. And I mean, those are my main ones. Mm-hmm. I I kind of get uh, into well, first off, I if this is your first episode, I'm a comic book artist, uh, and so I I am at all times just hunched over a desk and, you know, have random stuff on YouTube or like shows or like podcasts going like pretty much 24 seven. And so I listen to a bunch. Uh, some of my favorites are also Believe Hole, Bigfoot Collectors Club. I'm really into Penny Royal. It's awesome. If you're a fan of Hellier, if you know what that is, uh, you'll love it. It's really cool. Some of the more like sort of deeper dive uh, esoteric, m- metaphysical, sort of high strange and stuff. Uh, Where did the road go? Uh, strange familiars. Timothy Renner's show. Um, the higher side chat. What else? Mysterious universe. Um, Radio rental. Which oh yeah yeah me I too. Think Anything Pan Lindsay does yeah yeah. Heavyweight, which is pretty cool. Expanded mm-hmm. perspectives. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean that's another thing too. Like the the number of like. Oh, this, unique, especially when I'm doing like sound design and, and editing and stuff, like the number of out, like I just, I have to be listening to our voices <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, soundtracks and sound effects and putting all that stuff together. And so I can't be listening to something else when I'm, when I'm doing that. But yeah. Yeah. All right. It kind of smoothly leads to another one of the questions, which is how long do you research a topic before you feel like you're ready to make an episode, which is a great question. One hour. <laughs> yeah, I get just <laughs> look, it really does depend. You know, sometimes we already have quite a knowledge base mm-hmm. for whatever we're going to talk about, but mm-hmm. we just kind of have to get some of the details, you know, like especially if, if we're watching or if we're doing an episode about a movie, mm-hmm. you know, we want to know the director's, you know, how to pronounce their director's name. If Again, if you're a new listener, I'm pretty notorious for mispronouncing names quite often. Oh, yeah. But... You know, if it's something more detailed or something that I really want to dig into the like, telling the story of, it just kind of depends. Sometimes, Tyler, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but there have been moments where we're like, we're ready to go. We This is what we're talking about this week when we press record. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of get to the day and we're like, dude, we got to pivot, man. Like, there's so much more to this and I just don't feel like we're ready for it. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I will say, I mean, perfect example is... Uh, was it was it the Fred Valintich case? I believe I we were ready. It was like the day of the show, and I think I I had on the in the background. Um, I, I noticed that Astonishing Legends had also done it. Um, and if you're a fan of that show, they boy they go sometimes like two three episode deep dives. Um, and I heard like an episode, and I was like, oh my gosh, like we. We, we're missing like half of this that mm-hmm. isn't in your typical sort of 
like research. I mean, those guys have like they have a research of, team. Now. Yeah, they have a research like team, you know, so like hitting like microfiche and like doing it, you know, properly, which, you know, that's not entirely what our show is about uh, as far as like, you know, super, super deep dive, like info dump kind of thing for us it's like hey we think this is really cool let's get into like the aspects of it that make us excited you know yeah, exactly but uh but yeah no that's i would say probably maybe like a week on average more yeah. if it's like a like a pretty hefty mm -hmm. hefty topic this one is directed to me so <laughs> thank you woody what's your favorite ghost story from indonesia since you grew up there oh man the sad but true uh, reality is when I lived overseas, I, man, I, I didn't really, although I dug deep into learning about the culture uh, of, of Indonesia and stuff like that, at the time, I wasn't super into like the paranormal or the supernatural elements of culture and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the honest answer is I don't know any. But hmm. in the past, I'd say, I don't know, a few months and stuff, I've been making lists of things that... I want to dive deeper into regarding Indonesia, their folklore, the creatures that uh, that exist there, you know, just to, uh, well, at least, you know, mentally kind of get back to my uh, my old uh, stomping grounds in my youth. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fascinating that uh, you know nothing about it. Yeah. And if <laughs> this is, again, it, you know, for anybody new, uh, because of my dad's job, we lived overseas and I uh, spent a lot of time in uh, Indonesia. Tyler, this question is directed to you. So don't, you know, mm. hey man, don't mm. get your feelings. Hey man, hey, don't thanks, get your guys. feelings hurt. Thanks, listener. Tyler, have you ever tried automatic drawing or sketching? A cool experiment would be for someone to think of something and then have Tyler draw it. Uh, so what the listener is talking about is, uh, would be akin to like what's called automatic writing where, um, it was really heavy in like the turn of the century, like the spiritualist movements where uh, they would have a, a person that would just kind of aimlessly, you know, draw or sort of move the pen around or the pencil around on the paper. Uh, and eventually, you know, whether it would be like them tapping into s some sort of, you know, other plane of existence or, or, you know, allowing their, their selves to get into that like theta brain state or, whatever is the component of that, they would eventually start, you know, writing out things that were almost kind of being conveyed to them or, or channeled mm -hmm. through them almost. Um, I love that idea. I think it's really cool. I don't, I've never tried it, no. Um, but I think that, I, I almost think though that like, because that's what I, I do like every day, you know, draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I almost feel like it would be one of those situations kind of like, how it is when we play Cranium, where, uh, <laughs> oh, man. where because I, you know, this yes. is like what I do, it's hard for me to like disconnect that like technique or the little like thing. So it's hard for me to like, I feel like it would be hard for me to let go to get into that sort of relaxed mode. state or mode. Yeah. yeah. And, and since you're uh, taking your time explaining what happens whenever you play Cranium, is this, folks? First off, let here me just we say, go. Tyler and I make an excellent team. Oh yeah, we do. I'm pretty sure when your wife and I were on a team, we kind of switch it up, and I think like we crushed it too. But like oddly, yeah, <laughs> for like random reasons, because your wife is hilarious. I will say, like, Dude, she pulls it out of nowhere. She man. does pull it out of nowhere, and it's the most surprising thing sometimes. But like last second, last grain of sand is falling through <laughs> the 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 little like <laughs> uh, what's it called? Um, Hour, like hourglass timer, the last grain is about to drop. You can literally see it, and she comes up with the answer. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. But what Tyler's trying to explain is like he will literally take forever to draw like a bicycle. It's got to be like perfect it's or whatever. Hard. So we've kind of like I'll have to like coach him at the beginning of the game. Anytime we have like game nights and that kind of thing, I'll be like, okay, dude, think real simple. You know, like just give me the basics. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I mean, other boy, than that, I, we're like an excellent team. I get, I get down some rabbit trails just in life in general. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> when it comes to drawing, it's it's a uh, similar situation. Well, I have to say, man, but I do like I know idea, these though. questions, and you don't. 
Mm -hmm. you perfectly set up the next question, which Ooh. comes from a listener that says, uh, I'm going to paraphrase here, uh, but basically it says, hey, man, what's the deal with rabbit trails? Because growing up, I always <laughs> heard of it as like down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Is that some sort of like <laughs> southern thing, basically? And dude, the answer is no, it's completely wrong. It's the way that Tyler, and I think this happened in one of our like just initial episodes, right? You said rabbit trail. Mm -hmm. I kind of corrected you, and you're like, no, I'm pretty sure it's a rabbit trail. Yeah. And then now it's become part of our zeitgeist, really, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we just use as because it's hilariously wrong, and that's yeah. what we want to use. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I knew that it was technically wrong, but I've kind of just said it that way for so long that I, I just kind of expect Woody now to also say it. That way, and I do, and it kind of has, yeah. It's naturally uh, that's our thing now. Now, this question is one of my favorites that we got. After these messages, we'll be right back. America's future can be determined by our dreams and our visions. It was very intense front line. For over two hundred years, there have been reports of giant man-like creatures. From Another dimension, another world, I don't know. The most intriguing mystery on the North American continent. Hey, this is Bryce Johnson from the Bigfoot Collectors Club, and you're listening to Tyler and Woody on That Would Be Rad, because that is rad. All right, now this question, and first off, all these questions are amazing. <clears throat> Smokes... 50 packs a day. Yeah all, yeah. all of these questions are amazing. But whenever I saw this one, I was like, man, that is a really cool question. Like, I never I never thought about that. You so saying all the other ones aren't that cool? No, no. I'm saying, like, this one. It's pretty rude. No, they are that cool. All of them are cool. This, here's another cool question. There you go. Brought to you by Alpha, Alpha Brain. Brain. God, okay. I knew you were going to do that. Come right. on. What slasher movie do each of you think you'd be able to make it out of alive, mm -hmm. and how would we survive? Mm, that's a good one. It's really good. Uh, um, can I go first? Please do. Um, be, hey, be my guest, man. <laughs> hey, th hey, thanks, pal. I think that, I feel like we've talked about this before, but I feel like Texas Chainsaw Massacre would be, it's just a matter of like people hiding in the wrong places over and over and over. I feel yeah. like if you could just mm -hmm. get out in the open and just run. Look, I hate, I don't want this to turn into an argument, but I like where your head's at. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to I'm gonna make a little change here. So for me, I would say it would be, and I'm sorry for all you Friday the 13th lovers, mm -hmm. for me, it's got to be any of those movies. Yeah, that's true. Because it's like one guy. Slow. As long as you're not like the teenager, like getting a little saucy with mm. your girl or guy then you're going to survive, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you're not doing something bad or not supposed to, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be able to run away from, like, the heavy-footed freaking... Although, although isn't, isn't that kind of the whole premise, though? It's like yeah, you're going to be attacked if you're getting a little saucy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. that, you know, that's just kind of what happens, yeah, for sure. Um, almost like that's his revenge because that's the reason he died at in the first place, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, man, you've got like a whole family of these oh, that's, crazy yeah, people. Yeah, that's true. And dude, you remember riding through that those like East Texas mm. highways, dude, where there's nothing out yeah. there. In fact, like I think one of the last times we did that was coming back from us playing South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. We were, um, I guess our next stop was Oklahoma. somewhere in Louisiana, somewhere in Louisiana. Louisiana. Oh, no, dude. The next stop was when we played uh, Baton Rouge. What show Remember, that? that's, the, that's the venue that we showed up, and they're like, hey, man, bad, didn't, uh, you guys can do like two-hour set, right? <laughs> we're like, Par pardon? They're like, yeah, usually whenever we get the band on, you know, this is a this this bar is going to be oh. – and it was huge, man. It was like the most popular bar in Baton Rouge. No I, thought, idea what I thought we called. did pretty good. I mean, we got no, we a little lit it. there. Yeah. Well, we killed it. And all that – like it was this huge college crowd that they just came there to drink and stuff. Yeah. And so I remember like the guy too was like, you guys – hey, man, 
you guys play covers, right? And we're like, uh, no, no, sir. Not at all. We, we don't. Not uh, You know, we did end up playing like, I don't know, like uh, a few, couple like, Tom Petty songs. Kings and maybe of Leon. like a Yeah, Leon. something like that. But um, Yeah, that was the we, one where you're like, we would just go on these jams, you mm-hmm. know, that would be forever. And then you would just be like making up lyrics that had to do As with like. As we go. Yeah, yeah. With like the state and like. Yeah, that was yeah. a good that Oh, was a yeah, good show. dude. I forgot about that. I was just making up like relevant lyrics for mm-hmm. them to, Yeah. Actually, cool. I think a song may have come out of that. Yeah. Or a couple that, yeah. you know. For sure. Yeah, that was great. No, no, no. I know exactly what you're talking about. And it is that like feeling of, uh, I, well, I wasn't really thinking about the whole like, you're broken down, dude. Stranded. You're already trapped. You're stranded. You've got this crazy family there. See, yeah. you don't watch enough true crime. See, there. That's why you picked that. That one. family, though. Eeny way. Man, the the first one especially is Oof. boy it's terrifying, man. So I didn't see that for the longest time, and I just I I had, I'd seen like clips of it, I guess, where where you see Leatherface. Uh, but man, for me, that f- the on the first one, it's like when they're sitting around the like the dinner table. And there's like the skeleton dude. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, dude, it's been a while. I, Boy, I'll, just, it's, I'll rewatch it. Today. It's real disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of music, here's a question Are we ever going to be able to hear more of y'all's music? God, we are setting the, these, these things up mm-hmm. really nicely. Um, the short answer whoop, hit the mic. The short answer is yes. The long answer is, I don't know when. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have some things in the works, mm-hmm. um, but we don't know, or we're not. Re- the answer is yes, yeah, but just not yet. Yeah, we've we've thought about it too. You know, eventually we will have a Patreon. Eventually mm-hmm. we will have certain things that are available for uh, the people. You know, yeah, behind the paywall. Yeah, um, and that is one that we've talked about. Not only. Uh, do we have a missing full album from our previous band, The Modern Society? But we also have uh, pretty much a whole album that we made mm-hmm. when the band sort of split up where it's just Woody and I, we recorded a whole record in his uh, a- a- apartment. little apartment and bedroom. Um, a couple songs in, uh, in y'all's place too. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, we, we had like a, a full sort of electric band and, indie rock kind of stuff. And so then we did another uh, record called Southern Ghosts mm-hmm. uh, where we played everything. There's a lot of banjo, like mandolin. Yeah, it's Acoustics more stuff. Um, Super folky, stripped down. I guess, but like, yeah, like it's, uh, it's good. And why that's a significant question also, because we also get this question quite often. The song that you hear uh, at the end of every show mm-hmm. is uh, is called Ghost Story. Yep. And it was a song from the album that um, basically y- you can't find anywhere mm-hmm. digitally. Um, long story short. Actually, you can. Digitally? Well, not digitally, but you can get it off eBay for and some reason. That's, that's not these... digitally. No, no, no. I know, I know. But I'm saying like <laughs> they're only uh, in China. I guess because they, or, dude, they're all over the place. Raphael Grandpa, I think. Yeah, he did. Bought one. Yeah, recently as well, like yeah. off of eBay. He sent like a sent a message. And he's oh, like, our buddy, check uh, it out. Like, Grandpa what? Batman, I think. Maybe that's who it was. I think he Grandpa no, no, no. Batman. No, Raphael Grandpa also has one though. Oh, okay. Yeah, a lot of ba- we're fans of Batman. A lot of grandpas. Okay, uh, which leads also to another question, Tyler. How many guitar pedals do you have? Mm. Really? Okay, so. Uh, looking now, hold on. While he's looking, going back to the song Ghost Story, <clears throat> um, just so you know who was what in the band or whatever, Tyler was lead guitar and backing vocals, and I was lead singer and just, you know, rhythm guitar. Uh, we, I have 17 on my board. Hold on, let me redo that. I just, uh, I have 17, God almighty, I'm just hitting this thing. Uh, I have, hey guys, be easy on us. First time. <laughs> so nervous. Uh, we have. I have seventeen on my pedal board. I could go through them all, but that's no. going to take too long. Um, but that, I mean, I don't know. That's not. I have tons and tons of boxes. Dude, if I had to guess, because you've also got some here at my house mm-hmm. for some reason, I'm going to go with a solid. 
at least, not including some that you let other people borrow as well, mm-hmm. at least 40 pedals. I think so, yeah. My number is a lot easier because for the longest time, I essentially played what, what we call in the biz barefoot. Yeah, that's which right. Which is nothing, but I would just plug directly, you know, into a tuner that ran straight into my amp just because I loved the sound naturally of what my hollow body uh, epiphone mm-hmm. would sound like through my uh, hot rod deluxe. But here's another. Oh, and band. also I have eight guitars, two acoustics, a banjo, no, a mandolin. Not a question. <laughs> not a question. <laughs> um, but last sort of music related question before we get into some of these other ones. Mm-hmm. What was the hardest part of. So one of the listeners send, sent this question. And they said, what is the hardest part about being in a band? You know, aside from sort of the obvious, which is, you know, being away from, um, you know, family and, mm-hmm. and, and that kind of thing. Just the hard part of, you know, being in a band. Okay. I think the, uh, t- to me, it's like that. And anybody that's been in a band, I'm sure feels exactly the same way. But it's like, you know, you're on the road and you're tired, you have to get up and do uh, like radio interviews or like TV, um, like local television performances at eight in the morning. And, uh, you know, and you're out, you've been out since like three, four in the morning the night before. It, you know, it, the road can like really beat you down. And so the whole time you're out there, you're like, man, I just, I can't wait to just like get home and relax and mm-hmm. see my family and my friends. And, uh, and get back to to be you know Woody and I would pretty much ride everything in the band so uh you know knowing that like we can get back home and like ride and kind of like chill out a little um but then the moment you get home you know after like the first day it's like ah, I can't wait to get back out on the road with my mm-hmm. brothers and like yeah. meet all these new people and play and stuff uh so it's just a constant kind of like you know push and pull of the road and and home, you know. Yeah, um, it's fun me, though. I miss it. Yeah. Oh man, it was a, it was a blast. I mean, <clears throat> I think in general too. Another difficult thing is just kind of managing uh, all the the separate personalities. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I say that not to say that we had like a band full of like divas or anything like no, that. But not everybody's kind of different. And like Tyler kind of mentioned, you know, we we're the the songwriters of 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 the band. And so we had like a certain amount of almost like mentally like ownership and like personal feelings tied into every single song. So even, mm-hmm. even on a simple level of just like, well, if the other guys are like, yeah, I mean, it's, that's a pretty cool song. We'd immediately take it personally. And I think another yeah. thing is just like so much in life, this, it, it goes back to that old phrase, like the youth is, is wasted on the young because mm-hmm. like, dude, we were immature idiots. Mm-hmm. trying to navigate these like pretty complex sort of like um scenarios with other people right and mm-hmm. so like you know we would have these like situations come up where you know we might be upset with another band member or you know this that and the other and frankly like we just never really like talked about it yeah like, which, we, which like, didn't you know, happen like a ton. No, no 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 in fact like but i just gotta normal. say like for the most part, man, like there's maybe a handful of times that we really had any kind of like heated discussions and I can remember them yeah. you know, vividly. And, and, you know, truthfully for me, the hardest part in looking back and remembering things is just any time that I may have come off like a complete ass, you know. Yeah, you did a lot. Shut up, man. <laughs> actually, actually, I know for a fact that I did. I was real big. It, it's funny because like, Woody would kind of take the role. Uh, so the other two guys, Thomas and Boo Boo, bass player, drums, um, were, uh, you know, I mean, we we're all like best friends. But like Woody would kind of be the um, mediator, the mediator, sort of the <laughs> the drill sergeant in a way of like um, structure, time, structure, and like, hey, know, we professionalism. Need to, hey, man, yeah, don't we need show to lead like, at this time. We need to sound check at this time. Mm-hmm. And then I was also that, but like in in the role of like like also obnoxious. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like like song perfection and like mm, practices. Mm-hmm. Like I would get so frustrated when like the people would show up late, and then we'd be sitting there the whole time. And like our bass player Boo Boo was notorious for just 
he's just a funny dude that like the, the best is I, oh I remember this God. so well, dude. Like it didn't matter where he was located in the country. <laughs> if you called him because he was running late, ten minutes. For two things he would say. One, I'm just finishing up laundry. And two, <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm about ten minutes away. <laughs> And meanwhile, we're two all, hours later. Yeah, yeah, we're sitting at the practice space and just waiting. And that's even if you could get in touch with him. That's if oh, he yeah. would like answer his phone. I mean, I remember so many text messages being like, "Pick up your fuck phone." God. Um, yeah. But you know, again, it's like we're young, and and I, I, and again, I think a lot of times because Woody and I were like so. Um, sort of invested on like an emotional level, like with the music itself, you know, like it's it's yeah. coming like from us, it's coming out of us. And mm-hmm. so it was like, we would show up at practice. F- for example, I-, I would stay up till four in the morning. I didn't have a job like Woody. Woody went in really early at like a mental health facility. Yeah. Oh, and, I did the hospital, yeah. Yeah. And so I would stay up really late. Woody would get off work, come over. We sort of would rewrite parts of the song and like change this here, make this better, fix it. And then, so we're super psyched. So we show up to practice and we just can't wait. And it's like, kind of like what you said, it's like, you know, somebody's going to be late or somebody's not going to show up or somebody's going to be like, I mean, it's okay. And it's like, it just, you would just, become, it's hard. It was hard, especially as a, as a young man in your twenties, mm-hmm. it was hard to like not be immediately pissed off at that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and dude, you know, you know what else is hard, man? Like, or no, I, I wouldn't say hard. The tragedy, the tragedy of it all was, I mean, we'd never been more like in sync. Oh, yeah. Uh, musically and like everything mm-hmm. than like those last few months when we were just, I mean, on another level, dude. Those practices mm-hmm. were the best. And that's another thing, too, man. Like, <clears throat> There's probably a whole album worth of music that oh, was God, never dude. recorded too. That's yeah. another hard part about being in a band. You go, you spend all this time on this like album and that you're gonna tour on and support that album, right? And so you gotta you gotta buy, I'm sorry, not buy, you've gotta play the songs to encourage people to buy them, right? Mm-hmm. Well, by the time because we we wrote so much, constantly, man, constantly writing. And that was part of the reason why I didn't like being on the road sometimes because we just didn't have the same opportunity and time to write. We wrote so much that by the time the album was done, we were like, I hate that song. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know? And uh, that that was also another hard part. I think, you know, in a way, musicians that are out there now, I'm not going to say they have it easy because no matter what, the any kind of art. Get off my it, lawn. Yeah, it's just any kind of art industry is just like so hard uh, if that's what you're pursuing as your career. But um, it is like a different landscape, like the yeah. ability for people to just be able to self-release things mm-hmm. constantly, not even in an album form, which, I, you know, I feel like that's an art in and of itself oh, that yeah. we took seriously was like, how do we want people to listen to the songs like what is the order like how yeah. do we you know what i'm saying well and and not even i'm just real quick not even not even just that but also <clears> just <throat> the idea that like i mean i would say so many releases that you that you hear now like i, mean, mm-hmm. I don't listen to a ton of new music but like most of it's done at home like on a computer yeah. we mm-hmm. were kind of on that last little and i mean big band you know your big massive bands are still going to go in to your giant studios like sun and tree sound and all that stuff but like mm-hmm. You know, we that last record, which was completely kind of scrubbed from the internet and disappeared because of label situations. But you know, we recorded at Courtney Love's old studio with mm-hmm. Stacy Jones, who was the old lead singer of American Hi Fi, the mm-hmm. drummer and uh, music, music director for Miley Cyrus. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, it was a big like ordeal and a big sort of event. And I feel like that was so magical. And you just don't. I don't know that that many folks get to even like experience that anymore, mm-hmm. and that's sad. Yeah. Anyway, you know, sorry to cut you. Hopefully, off. like if there's a musician, any aspiring musician listening or whatever that are younger or whatever, man, try to go for that experience because it is it's oh. worth it, man. It's yeah. just amazing, just living in that environment. Mm-hmm. 
with it kind of shut off to the world, man. I mean, it's just it's just brilliant. So anyway, that was the longest uh, answer <laughs> uh, to the question mm -hmm. possible. But hopefully, uh, hopefully wait, didn't I cut you, you off though? Or are you Probably trying to go happens somewhere constantly. Else? How dare you? This is another great one. Is there a movie that disturbed you so much that you can't ever watch it again? Mm. You go first, bro. Okay, so. Uh, well, never watch again. I swear I had a, like a list of these at one point. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, since you're taking forever and you're, um, <laughs> um. Just thinking. Well, well, before you go, the first thing that does come to mind isn't a. Isn't it magical that finally it comes to mind whenever I start talking? Cause yeah, cause you want to interrupt like, me? Yeah. I feel like you're, it's you're, pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. You're pushing yeah, me out. It's pretty, pretty cool, man. <laughs> hey, cool, cool, cool. No, I. What immediately comes to mind is the, again, like what I was saying earlier, how Woody and I both have like these sort of, and I'm sure everybody does. I'm strong. He's not, you know. That, yeah, big boy, ahead. little boy kind of thing. You, <laughs> you, you have these things in your memory of when, as a kid, you know, Woody has this memory of this obscure guy with his skin torn off that we cannot find what this movie is. Uh, just in case somebody listening hasn't heard God, me talk about that. Hold on, man. I got to explain it just in case somebody every can time. find this, dude. Every time. <laughs> no, like, just in case. Okay, here's my memory. There's this, like, guy. He doesn't have any, like, skin on him. He's kind of just, like, the musculature of a person. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, in this, like, hospital. And he's kind of, like, like making this, like, sort of, like, <laughs> like sound, trying to communicate with somebody. And, like... I can't remember if it's like his wife or something that he's trying to communicate with that finally found him or something. God, that does sound so it sounds, familiar. Look, and so many people have said, oh man, it's got to be Hellraiser or Hellraiser 2. Yeah. And I've, I've watched them and there's elements that are like, oh, 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 here we go. And it's not it. So I, I thought I can't too, tell. Like maybe Nightbreed, you know, the guy that like. Yeah, I need to rewatch that too, man. Scalp like, off. I have watched all of these trying to find it mm -hmm. and, and I can't determine whether or not is this just some crazy dream I had when I was a kid because I accidentally saw a part of Hellraiser or something? Mm. But then I asked my mom about it like a couple months ago. I was like, Mom, okay, this is going to sound crazy. By the way, the, but if you know of like the Bloody Bones or what's called Rawhead Rex, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. they're kind of like cryptid characters. It's basically that. That's what Woody's talking about. Yeah, kind of, yeah. So, I mean, um, you asked anyway, your mom. Yeah, I asked my mom and she remembers seeing it too, because vi like vaguely, I kind of remember maybe her and I accidentally saw this movie, and she was like, "Oh gosh," and like turned it off because I don't remember anything else about it. Mm. Just that, just the hospital scene, kind of yeah. And that dude was just like skinless, Man. and like the wife is like trying to help him. And and see, I can't. She she said that from her memory, she was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you remember." Like I remember that, and she said that it had. She thought it had something to do with like. Like it maybe like a not a TV movie, but it was some sort of like special. Oh god, about that could maybe be like anything. a killer that did. So, yeah, no, exactly. But like the way my memory remembers this scene, like it seems like it would have been too much for TV, dude. Yeah, that does sound a little, a little. I mean, I don't know. It was, but you never really saw like a skinless. Mm, yeah, you know. Anyway, sorry to derail your no, uh, no, 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 your answer. Uh, no. And, and mine, I had one also for the longest time, and I never actually saw the movie. But basically mine was, I remember being at my dad's late at night. Everybody had gone to sleep. I was probably watching American Ninja Warrior, Predator, The Crow, who, who knows. And there was this trailer that came on. And keep in mind, I was like staying up, drawing, which I, just, I would just do incessantly. Uh, which really paid off, so stick at it, kids. But this trailer came on, and I remember it's even still kind of blurry, even though I found it recently. But um, like a like somebody's coming in their house at night, and you know, it has that sort of the lights are off, has that sort of diffused moonlight lighting that '80s movies would have, and it's sort of like panning across the room, and you know, everything kind of looks normal. The person like passes through the living room and then it does a semi like kind of close up, I think. And the dude's eyes open and you realize that the dude has painted himself perfectly like the wall. 
So he's mm. painted like, you know, window curtains and, you know, a bookshelf on half of his body. And it was just so terrifying. Like the way mm-hmm. it's shot is like, even still. And so I found it a while back and I don't even know how I discovered it, but pretty it sure was. I found, pretty sure I found it. Maybe you did find it actually, mm-hmm. but it's actually from A Stranger Calls Part Two. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, the original came out in the seventies, and this one came out right late yeah. eighties, early nineties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but it still kind of holds up. I mean, I don't know how mm-hmm. the rest of the movie is, but but yeah, that, that particular scene, pretty scary. Yeah, yeah, it got me. Uh, for me, it was um, The Exorcist. Mm-hmm. Man, I cannot. I just don't like sort of like this spiritual or um, possession type scary movie. Yeah, my wife is not my thing. It just like just kind of going back to, you know, the old Freddy versus Jason movies. Mm-hmm. For me, Freddy was f- far more terrifying than Jason because like he comes to you in your dreams, man. He can hurt you while you're sleeping. Oh, and yeah. No matter how hard you try to stay awake, you're going to fall asleep eventually. Mm-hmm. You have to. You, you know? have to. With Jason, it's like, well, as long as I'm like not the slowest, exactly. Then I'll, you know, and so the same kind of deal, like something that I don't have any control of, like, uh, like possession, yeah, possession and stuff, mm-hmm. like that's just too terrifying to me. Don't even want to think about it. Yeah, that's it. It is. It is pretty scary. Um, I, I've never been. It's never really. Um, been a thing that I'm just like super scared of. My wife is like, she just hates any of that stuff. It's not even like I just have, it's not even that I just like, I'm so scared of it that I don't want to watch it. It's just like, I don't know. I I don't know. And there's tons of those movies. Although I I will say Exorcist, like, man, you do, it does leave you feeling like, gross, man. Yeah. Immediately you have to watch Ernest Saves Christmas. Immediately. Here's another question for you. What fantasy, fictional book, movie, game, world, or realm would you want to be a part of and mm. why? Um, I mean, there's so many of like, you know, your big ones like, like Star Wars. Mm. I mm-hmm. think it'd be amazing. Um, That's probably the one I would pick. But yeah, per, I mean, it, it is kind of hard not to. But if you are, if we are doing sort of, Dude, what if what if you're like what if you're really given that choice, right? And then you end up in the Star Wars universe, oh, and you're just like a normal person. <laughs> I'm just like you don't have the force. I'm just Uncle Ben, the farmer. You say like, I'm a moisture farmer. <laughs> Jeez. No, I do think of uh, there's a book that Woody and I both love from Clive Barker called The Thief of Always. Yeah. If you haven't read it, it's amazing. It's mm-hmm. it's pretty short. You can get through it. But there's like the whole thing is set in this holiday house, which I don't want to give it away, but eventually it... Just done with then. It's not like, so good. But you, like you can't say, I don't want to give it's it away for me and to continue what you're saying. Well... The worst. The house is amazing. Or just that's it, man. How about it? the book is amazing and that's the world that you want to be in. Yeah. Or Clive Barker's We World. Or yeah, American Gods. Also good. Yeah. And, you know, and Clive Barker's got this, like, incredible way of, he's, like, an incredible, like, sort of, quote-unquote, world builder. Oh, man. yeah. You know, Weave World especially. Good yeah. Lord. Yeah. So, um, for me, you know, on Star Wars, only if I have the Force. I got to say that because I want to just end up being Jar Jar Binks or something. Yeah, that's true. Outside of that, man, I really kind of do think that the D&D, like the Dungeons and Dragons sort of like mm-hmm. universe would kind of be cool. Yeah, me you too. Know? And, and just uh, be able to like kind of pick what character uh, you wanted to be in, the powers that you had and stuff. I think that would be kind of cool. Man, that would be cool. Yeah. All right. The next couple kind of have to deal with time travel, which, as you know, if you're a listener of the show from the beginning, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of, yeah. which it's kind of kind of getting more into like I'm also a big fan of interdimensional travel as well Mm -hmm. um one of them is is there a time period that you most relate to and then second so two-part question sub question if you could go to a time for 24 hours and spend that time with somebody who would it be Mm. so so while you're thinking i kind of already have this one thought about is there a specific time if you said abe lincoln i'm getting off this podcast abe lincoln and um (laughs) Gettysburg. Probably God. It just, that question always reminds me of The Office when he's like, um, I, you know, 
Justin Bieber. Uh, he says something like ridiculous. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like, you know, like some movie star, <laughs> somebody else. And then he's like thinking hard. And he's like, I mean, Abe Lincoln. And then he's just, he's just like dead quiet. And he just like realizes that whoever's watching this probably thinks that's shallow. And then, and then he's like, uh, and probably God. <laughs> probably. Man, the funniest show ever. Okay. Um, time period that I most relate to. Don't you steal mine? Yeah, you you take that part. I'm gonna go with. Hold on. Well, I know that we're you, both. Gonna you say answer the, same the time. time period. Yeah, no, you answer the time period part. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about like if I could go back the 24 hours, I would say like I would want to spend it with. Um, I don't really. Know. That's a hard one, man. I, I that is hard. You know, I've always been fascinated with the idea of going back and seeing your parents. Um, mm. You know, when they were young, I don't really I think that would be kind of cool. Or like a or like like an ancestor, you know, mm. um, that I haven't met or something. That would mm. be kind of cool. Interesting. And um, probably God. <laughs> I would definitely say I think I've always felt like I was born in the wrong, you know, decade. I feel like, I mean, I I know I I don't have to like wonder. I feel like both of our, us would say the sixties, mm-hmm. um, early sixties. Yeah, early 60s for, yeah. for like fashion and, uh, you know, I mean, Cigarettes. I literally I have mod tattooed on the inside of my lip and our band was called The Modern Society, which is a play mm-hmm. on, you know, the British mods and rockers kind of mo- movement. And uh, yeah, I think the 60s were just really cool. And as, especially as much as I love the internet and the convenience of, you know, the, this modern world that we live in, I just, I don't know. I feel like there's like a, a, a naivete and like an innocence that was available then that's, we'll never, you know, not have that now. Yeah. I mean, we'll I, never I, have that now. I can agree with that a lot, actually, man. I, there's, is, there is something about like the availability aspect of things, whatever it is, whether it's like being able to order something on Amazon and get it. Mm-hmm. delivered on the same day or like vitamins being able to watch you know find this rare stupid 80s scary movie and be mm-hmm. able to watch it you know the the thrill of the hunt essentially is kind of like gone man and yeah. like i guess the appreciation for things and, and i don't know i think that's why like so often i end up w- with my own interests you know and like looking through my old baseball cards and like physical things from an era uh, that I really loved, even if it is the 60s as well, like, man, there's just something to it. But for me, I would say, yeah, like early six, think early 60s Paul McCartney, like right before mm-hmm. a hard day's night, mm-hmm. but into the hard day's night, that's what I feel like I would be like yeah, if I was in that era. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I also kind of dig the, like the late 60s too. Like you had the, you know, like the, the uh, the era of like the Stones where Keith Richards had like the like the little tips like bleached on his hair and he had this Moroccan scarf in front of like the Coke mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. like the Say No to Drugs yeah sign you know where it was yeah, like yeah before it just went into like crazy flower like, power stuff like yeah all the yeah. bell bottoms and stuff it's like they were still into that like form fitted mod mm-hmm. clo- like silhouette but it was like yeah. starting to get a little loosey goosey just like the the silly innocence of it all too like yeah you know hard is night help um oh, even yeah. in the, like the early stones and stuff but i also loved watching like the like it's so fun to be in a later generation and then like watching and listening to the beatles or the stones sort of like evolve into what they ended up being you know mm-hmm. I, I was you know that was just a that was also a fun sort of moment of discovery and and mm-hmm. uh, and stuff musically anyway yeah um as far as like the 24 hours with somebody man i don't i really don't know john teeter maybe mm, yeah that's a good one yeah learn the secrets of time travel i would love to hang out with art bell uh in yes, studio dude and just talk for 24 hours straight yeah exactly and if i could also if john teeter could also join us mm-hmm. i mean can you imagine man dude amazing this comes from a listener that uh, it says, hey, I'm new to the show. 
catching up and have been binging your previous episodes. So forgive me if you've already covered these, but I noticed on the first episode of season two with Bryce Johnson Mm -hmm. uh, that you guys went through a list of sort of rapid fire questions uh, with him. And I was curious about your answers uh, to those, which, you know, we kind of Great question. And we kind of, yes, thank you very much. We kind of answered those on the episode slightly, uh, if I remember right. It's been quite a few episodes since then. But, yeah, let's go through them. Mm-hmm. So, number one was favorite 80s horror movie. Oh, For man. me, that's, I got to say, Freddy, or um, A Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one, because that one is the one that kind of introduced me uh, mm-hmm. to that sort of genre mm-hmm. of um a movie. Uh, I'm also going to stay in that same line of thinking, but I'm going to say uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors. Nice. Because it kind of felt like a, I mean, it was Stranger Things before Stranger Things. You had mm, your mm-hmm. your big guy, your your punk girl, your wizard, nerdy kid. It was like, it was like a little like superhero team. Um, mm-hmm. And it was the first time too, I think that like, they started really pushing the the charisma of Freddy and yeah. uh, and like getting kind of creative with like the whole dream world of like not just Freddy having all these powers and abilities of, you know, crazy kind of Green Lantern style, like whatever it is you think of, that's what you can you can be. But it also kind of transferred to now all these kids like also are able to, you know, to be badasses in the mm-hmm. in the dream world. So yeah. that's my favorite. Nice. Favorite, I'm sorry, your guilty pleasure song from 80s or 90s. Let's come back to that because okay. that's a lot more than one. All right. Nintendo or Sega? Nintendo. Nintendo all the way, man. Which is I tough. Mean, I had a, I, you know, there's some good Sega yeah. games. And I had a Sega Genesis. But for me, man, Nintendo was like what started it. I mean, oh, like, yeah. You know, you, you would just be like, hey, I'm going over to my cousin's house. We're going to play Nintendo, even if they had a Sega. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, um, and, and also Super Nintendo, oh especially, because that was my first Final Fantasy. Well, I take that back. I did have the original one on regular Nintendo, mm. but that was the first, I guess it's Final Fantasy 3, I think, um, that just blew my mind. It was the first time that I'd ever spent, like, over 100 hours, you know, on a video yeah. game. Like, yeah. I, would, I, would tell, I would play sick to stay at home to, like, beat this game. Man. So yeah, Nintendo. Um, Nike or Reebok? Nike. Nike, yeah. yeah. Starter jacket or Baja hoodie? Again, easy. Starter, Starter jacket. jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Skateboarding versus rollerblades? Skateboarding. Skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Vans versus airwalks? So uh, my family is a Vans family. All my girls wear little old school Vans. And I like the classicness of Vans. I mean, like the early, like, Tire Flex, Peralta, yeah, era skateboarding like that. Vans were were around then, but when I got into skateboarding in like middle school, I got to say Airwalks for me personally. Yeah, me too. I mean, those were the ones that I wore all the time. Yeah, um, but now, just like you, like I love, I love a nice pair of Vans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I love this question because I already know the answer: Vanilla Ice versus MC Hammer. You go I'm first. going vanilla ice. I not I mean look get I like into them both. It. I liked them both. That's why this question uh that's why we made this question to ask That's a uh, hard one. episode. It is very hard, but I'm going to go with vanilla ice only because I had the chance to meet him, although I did try to meet MC Hammer when he came to Indonesia. Whoa. Um, yeah, forgot to tell you about that, but didn't we were in the hotel lobby and he went somewhere, you know, like out the back door. Like yeah, so totally missed him, saw his entourage, Man. but not him. But I met Vin- Vanilla Ice a couple years ago at the uh, at the Atlanta airport. So he's super, dude, nicest guy ever. Yeah, I've heard that. I've he's heard he's really, really cool. cool. I, uh, so in fourth grade, I sang Ice Ice Baby in front of the class. Oh my God. Loved Vanilla Ice. I thought it, thought it was amazing. Uh, but I got to say... I also have this memory of my mom renting me a tux. I think I've said this on a past episode. I <laughs> danced in a talent show to Too Legit to Quit, kind of like the show where we got amped up and played the set super fast. Mm-hmm. 
like 20 minutes into the set, 20 minutes earlier than we should have. But yeah. uh, same thing happened in the talent show. Had to go through the routine twice. So I have a soft spot for too legit to quit. So, I man, it's tough. But I guess MC Hammer for me. That's the most incredible scene oh, I can yeah. imagine. There's, there's, got, there's a video somewhere. My mom's got to have it. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip that one because, of course, we've played D&D &D before. Mm -hmm. um, favorite, these are the two questions that are going to require longer answers. Your favorite cryptid? You go first. For me, of course, I love them all, including Bigfoot mm -hmm. and all that. But for me, the Flatwoods monster yeah. is my favorite. I love the way it looks. I love mm -hmm. the story. I love everything about it. Yeah. Yeah. God, that's tough, man. I mean, I want to say the Kelly Hopkinsville goblins because they're like flatwoods. They're just weird and like obscure. Uh, but then that also leads me to uh, Sam the Sandown ghost clown. Oh, uh, yeah. Which, man, it's it's tough because I, I, I love that story so much. But I guess if I had to do it, I think Mothman yeah. is is just sort of a classic. He's, he's like the Batman of, of cryptids. Maybe it was Batman. Maybe it was Batman, right? And then this one, what is your favorite guilty pleasure song from the 80s or 90s? And in case you need a definition of guilty pleasure, that means it's not necessarily cool, mm -hmm. which is kind of hard to pick in, in the 80s. Like everything was either super cheesy but still cool mm -hmm. or just like cool, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like that's kind of difficult. But anyway, a song that isn't necessarily cool Kind of maybe even known to be sort of cheesy and lame. Well, let's do like just, several, not just one. Well, I don't, I mean, good Lord, Tyler. I mean, I'm just for saying. For me, I can, for me, immediately it comes to mind that I talked about on that episode where we did these. It's going to be everything I do, I do it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From the, by Ryan, Ad, by Brian, Brian Adams, Adams, by Brian Adams from the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves soundtrack. Yeah, dude. Now, again, I love that song so much that I thought, you know, I think I've got a good idea, a good idea here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take, I'm going to make a tape of this song, but I'm going to do it back to back, both sides. This song just re repeating, it's <laughs> just like over and over and over again <laughs> on every side of this tape. I'm going to give it to Robin Orlansky, this girl that I had a crush on. Man, I love it. Hey, man, we became whatever, like the whatever grade, that fifth grade boyfriend and girlfriend. Man, it I worked. Mean, hey, Brian. If you're listening, Brian Adams, thank you, sir. Not not to be confused with Ryan Adams. No, but there is a cool, it's out there on the internet. I think you can find it on YouTube because a lot of times there is some name confusion there between Brian Adams and the more like early 2000s to now Ryan Adams. Which we've talked to Ryan Adams on the telephone. Yep. And the, he used to kind of get pissed off when people would like say, oh. but finally, there was like this set where he did... A, uh, I think he did, um, it might have been Summer of 69. What? Was something he did. Yeah, dude, he covered it. And it's amazing. Oh, my. Yeah, he does amazing. such a good job. At, like, Wonderwall is mm -hmm. incredible. I thought you were going to say, because he, he would get a he would get more than just a little pissed oh, off. Oh, he would, like, walk off the stage and not come back. Well, I remember stuff. one one set that he had, I think it was in Chicago, hey, when he was Pete. first getting, <laughs> no, when he was first getting, like, kind of big. And this guy was in the crowd and kept saying, kept yelling, like drunk dude, kept yelling summer of 69. And he stopped the set until they escorted the dude out. Like he, he was like, I refuse to sing another song until this guy's out. And I think they did it. Man. Pretty crazy. Yeah, dude. I'll send you the link to yeah, that's awesome. summer of 69. It's incredible. Um, yeah. You're right on that. Like I, I, I have such a fondness for that. Like, like rec department dance, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like, here's the, the fast songs. I remember like, is I like the fast songs. I loved, uh, Marky Mark and the funky bunch, CNC music factory. Yeah. Uh, Crisscross jump. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, big audio dynamite. The globe was a song that I was like obsessed mm -hmm. with. Do you remember I that song? I that one. I'll send it to you in a minute. It's amazing. But yeah, Brian Adams was, was like king of the slow songs. And also uh, Richard Marks. You remember Right Here Waiting? Mm -hmm. That was like another 
pretty awesome. Vanessa Williams, Save the Rest, the Best for Last. Oh my God. You remember that song? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was like, they just, they had all these songs that, that they would. Dude, you said it perfectly, man. It really is that like sort of middle school dance yep, era. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, do you remember those like just straight nervous feelings? You're like just. Oh my God. Well, oh my gosh. I remember man. like. It's like both the best and the worst. Oh yeah. You know, like it, trying but, to get the courage to go ask the girl that you have a crush on. Mm -hmm. like, hey, you want to dance? Oh. It was so nerve wracking. But I will yeah, say yeah. like, like you will never, ever in your whole life experience the rush that you felt after you left the dance on like a successful night like oh yeah man you got a kiss she laid her head on your shoulder mm -hmm. but yeah they would pack out these the uh at least my you know middle school rec department elementary school dances the dude would just play like brian adams richard marks vanessa williams the fast songs i remember rock set oh um, yes i remember and this is also kind of like an era where like we would hang out at like the skating ring, which like salt and pepper push it. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? Uh, dude, how bad of the bone did you feel at the skating ring oh, whenever man. they would all of a sudden play inner sandman? Oh You're yeah, like, dude, that was it. That was <laughs> my moment. <laughs> I am just I tried to skate backwards, I fell down, but it's still inner sandman. I could never skate backwards, man. You need to do terrible. Yeah, same. I'd be like, wait, I got this. Whoop, bam. Yeah, new guilty pleasures because you make fun of me. I love the God Shuffled His Feet record of the Crash Test Dummy. Uh, yeah, well, that's not guilty pleasure. I dude. thought you made fun of me for liking no. that. No. Well, no. now you're going to make fun of this. I love love the first three albums from Tori Amos. I'm not going to make fun of you for that either. You I have just made never, fun of me. No, I have not. I never really got into her, man. I mean, I, I always wanted to, man. I thought she was like, dude, she weird was and cool. Yeah. But I just never, I don't know, man. Um, I'll tell you, in, in terms of weird and cool, who I loved was Bjork, man. Oh, yeah, dude. Ooh, yeah, she's she, amazing. Dude. Yeah. I actually got into this girl. Um, but, but first off, not the question. Well, no, no, real quick. There's a girl named Meg Myers, which I randomly ran across, and she kind of has that, like, like vitriol, like, like pissed off, like, girl, Kate Bush, Tori Amos, but, like, with modern sort of musical stylings, I guess. It's really cool. You, you got to check her out. I just realized that I haven't told you about her. Yeah, well, she's also cool. not the question. Okay. <laughs> uh, she Drives Me Crazy by oh, Finding God, we're Cannibals. still going. <laughs> they just keep popping in my head. Just forget, hey, man, we got enough here. Oh, Spin Doctors. That was a huge one back in the day. Oh, man, me too. I used to, oh, yep. dude. I thought I was like the coolest. Or now I had two tapes that I would just be like, I got to memorize these lyrics. Oh, Spin yeah. Doctors and then Informer. Oh, Snow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one, man. <laughs> okay. Um, also, do you remember that song, Return of the Mac? No. I don't remember who the, the band or the guy is, but also another big hit. I mean, it's a whole nother category of, of songs when we start moving as we get into like, we're a little bit older. Oh, and yeah. And it's like, yeah. Well, it, then it kind of, then the, it's still cool. They're not really like, one thing about Woody and I is that we were into like so many sort of diverse kind of styles of music, if you will, that like, there's nothing that's really like a guilty pleasure. Like, I think all this stuff is kind of cool. Yeah. But I mean, I think like when we were younger, like, yeah, I mean that's true, dude. Well, but I mean, like, I but I see what you mean, like, the, like CNC Music Factory and <laughs> <laughs> and Marky Ace Mark and the Ace, Funky dude, Bunch. I thought, oh, like, if I'm Ace, remembering yeah. correctly, I thought like the 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 I had like a crush on the Ace of Base. Yes. Yeah. Oh so yeah. I, if I'm remembering right, I could look him up now and just be like, oof. I think well, there was a, a hot one. It's my it's hey man, it's my truth. Okay. Oh okay, good good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Last question. Because it's a doozy. Man. And also, I, dude, if you name another song. I'm, no, 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 I'm, I'm not just, naming another song. I'm just saying. I'm doing the theme have song like, right here if you name another song. Don't we have like a ton more that we'll hit at a later date? Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me. I was going to kind of say that at the end. Like if, let me just say that at the end. Okay. All right. Last one, because this one is a doozy. Where do we stand? Has our position changed at all? And this is one of the most popular questions we get is about this episode. Where do we stand on the simulation theory? Mm. Um, do you want to go first? Oof. Um, All right. I mean, I you know, that's a, again, 
It's a hard question because it's <laughs> it, just like a lot of these topics, it's constantly evolving. Mm-hmm. We've had some really good conversations with listeners uh, in our direct messages about this. You know, a lot of awesome ideas and theories and just input from you guys. So obviously, thank you very much for that. We love when that happens. You know, I don't know. To me, it's one of those situations that's just extremely interesting. I think it's very easy for people just out of the gate when they hear simulation theory to just kind of immediately write it off as just like, you know, I'm not no battery. You know, Mm -hmm. I think the same goes for a lot of theories in the world. People just, if they don't know it or understand it correctly, Mm -hmm. it's immediately just written off. What what he means is like the matrix, basically. Yep, right, right. So people are like, I'm not in the matrix, you know. And so I think there's a lot of, that's my take is that there are a lot of different ways that you can look at it. But if you just look at it from like any of the sort of major popular sort of religions, sort of the purpose of humans being on earth, Mm -hmm. essentially, in my opinion, again, not trying to offend anybody, uh, and I think we'll, we'll maybe talk about this in just a second about the, I guess, the tragedy of, of people getting offended when, when thinking about ideas and stuff. But to me, it's like if, you know, if we're talking about Buddhism, if we're talking mm-hmm. about Hinduism, mm-hmm. if we're talking about Christianity, Judaism, and I don't know mu- like a whole lot about the Islamic sort of approach to this, but to me, it's like you're sitting down on earth there's a purpose behind it, mm-hmm. right? You are a, uh, there, you're a spiritual, spiritual being that's essentially, and I'm just going to use a computer term because it's easy, uploaded into this physical form. Mm-hmm. And while you're here during your lifetime, however long or short it is, you have the opportunity to make decisions, to do things, to grow, not just physically, but like in a spiritual sense. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at Buddhism, it's, you know, that path to nirvana, that path to enlightenment. If you're looking at Hinduism, it's that sort of reincarnation thing. There's all of that, right? And so whenever you kind of look at it through that lens, not so much, hey, we're in a computer program, but that there, do you, do you know what I'm saying, man? No, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, any religion, uh, you know, especially the ones you named, I mean, whether it be Christianity, you know, it talks about, um, you know, we we can't see beyond a veil, but there, there's like forces of good and evil fighting all around us. But they're just, it's almost like they're on just like another plane. And so, and but, you know, whether it's Christianity, whether whatever, we're, there's this belief that we will eventually ascend out of this plane of existence. So, you know, you look at this as like sort of like the tutorial or the training area where, yeah, you make decisions and you do good things and then you, you know, you're, you sort of complete your karmic wheel if you're looking at that or you make it into heaven. Uh, it's all, it's all about like, there's this whole other spiritual existence that we can't really see or can't really I don't, I don't think we could even sort of like handle it like our, mm-hmm. you know, human minds could sort of wrap our heads around it. But there's definitely, no matter what the, the religion is, there's definitely that concept of like, you know, this, is, this sort of physical body, this physical realm that we live in is something else that we kind of have to go through to make it to the real thing. Mm-hmm. It's almost like the vehicle that's facilitating right. Right. The end goal, which mm-hmm. is whatever it is, go to heaven or next level in enlightenment mm-hmm. or achieve nirvana yeah. or, you know, uh, that kind of thing. One thing that, that I do like about this, so I definitely kind of believe that. I think I think the Matrix did really good and also kind of really bad. I think the good thing is it kind of gave us a, it gave us terminology or sort of nomenclature for explaining the simulation so Mm -hmm. it's like oh all you got to do is say like yeah i think we're in the matrix and you kind of you kind of get what the person's talking about however Mm -hmm. it also kind of sucks because somebody who's not into this is like immediately gonna sort of relate it all to this idea of like oh we're in a computer or it's got to be like a 
mechanical thing. I, I don't necessarily believe that. I, I do think that, I, I think that we are in a simulation. I think that, you know, it's tied into um, like quantum physics and I think like dark matter and like all this other, these sort of like out there theories. Mm -hmm. I think these are like the beginnings of our understanding into mm -hmm into that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, like spooky science at a distance, uh, um, well, you know, string it's cool, theory, all that stuff. All the things you're talking about and stuff, if you really kind of boil it down to, it's like, this is all of those things is the human mind trying to figure right, it out exactly. as best we can. Mm -hmm. And so you get the most brilliant minds and they come up with these incredible theories and stuff, but we still can't figure it out. And yeah. that's just amazing to me. And not in a bad way, like, well, they must they must be wrong. Just that pursuit of knowledge, man, mm -hmm. is just so cool. One thing that I have kind of started getting into around the time that we started doing the show is, you know, just the the level, I mean, even just you and I, just the, the amount of, like, synchronicities that happen. Mm -hmm. They're, they're mm -hmm. not just like, I'm sorry, and I know that I may, you know, f this may fly negatively in the face of, like, or atheist listeners out there, but like, I just cannot wrap my head around not believing that there's more to it. I mean, literally this morning, my daughter's singing this random song and she's just throwing out words like, I gotta get a shower to wash, da, 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 like weird stuff. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, she says something about, uh, I gotta, we gotta make sure the catfish is clean. It, so first of all, I'm like, where has she heard the term catfish? Cause yeah. she's three and, we haven't been watching anything with catfish. Uh, and then, you know, then I, I drop her off. And uh, on the way back home, I'm talking to my buddy, Obe. And we send the song Walking in Memphis, the Mark Cohen song, about uh, just because, like, I love that song. And it, the bridge gives me cold chills every time. That's probably the only other song in history that says the word catfish in it. So yeah. it's like these weird little things that it's they're easy to like brush off and they're easy to like say uh, that's that's just you know. that's just coincidence mm -hmm. that's just pareidolia the human mind like picking out patterns well mm -hmm. yeah I think there's something to the human mind picking out patterns because it's like pattern recognition because I think that d the same way that uh, that you discovered the Woody Woody Brown meeting mm -hmm. Elizabeth mm -hmm. Ann Brown. Or whatever it was. Yeah. Years marrying ago. in yeah, eighteen fifty four or whatever yeah. in Australia. Yeah. It's like these repeating patterns that like I, I just I find it so hard. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, when people when the debunkers say like, uh, and I know I, I harp on debunkers, and I don't mean like skepticism. I think that's healthy. But the people that just right out of the gate are gonna say, Oh, it was this, it was this, it was this. But it's I do find it funny that those are the same people that say Oh, it's just, they can just throw it out there like, oh, it's just a mass hallucination. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that if anything sort of cements and solidifies the concept of simulation, it's mass hallucination. So it's like, you're going to tell me just with ease that a whole schoolyard of kids witnessed the exact same event of, an, mm -hmm. of a, a, you know, a UFO landing on the lawn. You're going to say that they all witnessed the exact same thing and... And that's just like a normal kind of thing. It's like, no, I think they were tapped into the same like wavelength. Of, I mean, everything is just, you know, light and sound. And I mean, it's all it's it's too much for the mind to kind of comprehend. But I, yes, long story short, I do. I do believe in a simulation theory. When, oh, what I was going to say, sorry. And I know I'm rambling, rambling. But one thing that I have got into is this idea that. Uh, whether it be like alchemy or, you know, mm -hmm. Aleister Crowley and Jack Parsons with with like magic with a K, um, or even down to like like Jesus when he would we when he would heal the blind man. It's like going mm -hmm. through these actions, these like this like process, this alchemical process, if you will, of like these steps of things to to get like an end result. Whether that's magic, whether that's Jesus uh, picking up dirt, spitting on it, making mud, and then putting it into the person's eye, and it's a miracle. To right. me, I've kind of gotten to the point where I almost feel like those things are connected, and those are like... Hack, like hacking. It's like a hack. Yeah, it's literally like like you're hacking, you're able to hack the system and get these sort yeah. of... You know, in, just for 
people that may not know us as well, obviously when you say that, it can maybe come across to them like you're being a little irreverent in terms of like, well, then if I could just spit in a hand and get some mud, then I can cure the blind too. No, the knowledge and ability or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's again, going back to this is how we're comprehending. Yeah. You know? well, yeah. well, and what I mean by that is like, it, I mean, obviously no disrespect, uh, you know, to any of the, to, you know, especially like Jesus. I'm just saying that like these miracles would happen, but even Jesus, the son of God, even he, I think, mm. was having to play by the mm-hmm. rules set with the the, the, yep. the perimeter set by the the machine, if you will, or the mm-hmm. whatever that that simulation is. Mm-hmm. Even even the Son of God had to to go through these processes. So it's like you're gonna. He didn't just walk up, put his hands on exactly. the eyes, and say healed. Yes, I mean yeah. you're gonna feed a multitude, but first you got to have fish like two loaves of bread and three mm-hmm. fish or whatever. Uh, yeah. I just, it's I think kind of like what I always say, like when you water to wine, because wine is good. It's like, <laughs> it starts to party, man. <laughs> and someone says, well, you know, water back then was, you know, contaminated and stuff. It's like, hey man, we're talking about Jesus here, man. Yeah. You could just say, hey man, water's clean. Yeah. He wanted some wine. However, I do think that there are forces outside of, you know, whether it be like channeling or, you know, Aleister Crowley or or Jack Parsons mm-hmm. doing the Babylon working. It's like they're these. I think those are the same kind of thing where they're they're also like hacking, you know, the the code or whatever yeah. to get these quote unquote like miraculous or magic results. I think there's also there's like good and bad things in place though. So I think I feel like you're able to like pull this power mm-hmm. from negative or positive. I mean, everything's like a balance. Yeah, for anyway, sure. Anyway, you know, so yeah. it's like ones and zeros, so. Just like we kind of, I don't know if we've ever said it on the show, but like it's always interesting to me not to take it back to time travel, but gonna anyway. Mm. There's oh, always like it. this idea that whenever we talk about time travelers, consistently, for the most part, we're always thinking and talking about like people that are trying to save something or mm. change the world for the better. Mm-hmm. But what about like the bad guys, you know? Like, oh yeah, the Terminator, you know? I mean, there's gonna be, for every good mm-hmm, right. person or organization, there's also going to be an evil one, man. It's just the way it is, right? And yeah. so imagining that stuff is kind of uh, kind of scary too. Well, look, dude, we've got a ton of other questions here. To be honest with you, some of them I can just tell by not only the way that you or I typically answer something, there's enough sort of meat on the bone, so to speak, Very long with some ended. of these questions that they would be perfect to be an episode on their own. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, listeners, if you sent in a question and we didn't get to it today on today's show, don't be offended. That only means that we're going to address it either as an episode of its own mm-hmm. or in a future episode just like this one. Totally. I think this was a great idea, man. I had fun oh, me too, man. answering these questions. I got to say thank you, everybody that sent these yeah. in. It was awesome. And hopefully this kind of opens the doors to either more questions that you might have if you sent one in or mm. if you didn't send one in you'll now know hey look they're not going to call out my name beyond yeah. air here right yeah. so no need to be uh embarrassed or whatever yeah so thank you so much oh yeah absolutely and also i don't know if you you may have mentioned this before but if you have any other questions or not even questions but if you have like topics of you know something that maybe you found out about a cryptid that was more sort of regional to you or a topic that maybe we've never heard of, hey, feel free. We love that stuff, and we're always, you know, appreciative and grateful for for mm-hmm. ideas of, of things to get into because, I mean, there's a ton of stuff out there to cover, and we have a million more episodes to mm-hmm. try to cover them all. But, you know, there are a lot of things, especially, you know, we always ask for if you have any sort of spooky stories or anything that you've seen or even urban legends that are in your area. Those are the things that while the internet is great and it is like an aggregate of finding these these things, a lot of times these are the little stories that kind of you're only going to find in in your, you know, the your local town mm-hmm. bookshop with like in the local section, you know, or even still like word of mouth. Oh yeah, you know, 100%. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so if you do have any of those things, shoot them to us over on Instagram. That's where you can find us. Uh, We have a growing community over there. We'd love to have you. We'd love the more the merrier. 
you know, feel free to comment. Join the club. We love you. Mm -hmm. If you do have urban legends, any of those things I just talked about, uh, shoot us a DM. Or if it's more long form, or even better, if you knock it out in like a voice memo, feel free to send it to that would be radpod at gmail.com. Oh, we would really appreciate it if you could just get out there and spread the word on the podcast. Just tell one friend, mm -hmm. one coworker, that's it. One obscure person on the street you've never met before. Just vote for Don Lee. Just tell them. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. Also, we would really love it to, if you left uh, five star reviews, you can do that on Spotify, Apple, anywhere podcasts are being served. But yeah, I guess that's it. Can you think of anything else, Woody? I think that's it, man. All right. Well, we love you. We appreciate you. And as always, be rad. That's the way it goes. Another another song. That's okay. I guess. Okay.